So hey everybody, welcome back to Bow and Arrow Garage. So today I'm going to be working on the C3 Corvette. I'm really excited because I'm finally going to install the intake manifold permanently on this thing. Um, it's been a long time coming, but um, I'll kind of give you the details as I go through it. But I want to apologize for the lighting and I am going to be running my fan while I'm in here. It's just super hot here in South Central Texas right now. It's too hot to be in the garage. Uh, without any kind of air circulating and I'm going to go ahead and leave the garage door closed so that might affect the lighting a little bit but it's just too hot with the sun radiating in right now so so anyways without uh, any further ado I'm going to jump into this thing I'll kind of detail the uh, installation for you today my goal is to get this thing permanently installed and then we'll move on from there So to start off with, just to kind of give you an update, I have the cool packs kind of temporarily tacked in place. Um, I have this uh, tape covering the intake ports. I'm going to go ahead and get that pulled off. And then I did stick my old knock sensors in, but I went ahead and ordered new ones. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I didn't. I just didn't feel comfortable um, putting the old ones in. Um, one of them is, is somewhat new, the other is, is pretty corroded. Um, one of them did not come out of this engine, the other did, and I, I chose the best of the one that came out of this engine. But they're pretty corroded, and I just didn't want to take a chance, and then have to end up pulling the intake back off. So, um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and I'll get those pulled out, I'll put the new ones in, and then we'll go from there. Okay, the old, uh, the old sensor... It was a 1045 6603. The new ones that I'm going with are the GM replacement for that. And it is a 1258-9867. So I'm going with uh, genuine AC Delco parts. The um, torque spec is 15 foot pounds, uh, 180 inch pounds. So I'm either out of gasket sealer or I have misplaced it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna have to go to the store and get some here in a few minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this um, the steam vent lines um, connected. I um, I'm basically basically gonna go with the setup that is found on the Trailblazer SS slash um, basically my O9 Tahoe, which has the same manifold for the most part. So I'll get this thing installed. Once I'm done, I'll go ahead and make a parts run. Go get, go get the gasket sealer. I've got to get a couple of bolts for the hold down bolts for the um, <clears throat> for the cool packs. So I'll get that. And I apologize for my voice. I've been pretty sick the last couple of days. I have a, um, have a pretty good um, cold. My daughter has a sinus infection, so I probably have what she has, and it's just one of those things where I may end up having to go to the doctor. But it's Fourth of July weekend, so I'll do what I can, and then uh, we'll <clears throat> kind of hoping that it resolves on its own. And this kit, for anybody that's interested, is a Dorman. It's a 626-591. They call it a heater hose assembly, but it's basically the steam port uh, set up for the, uh, like I said, for the, the newer engines. It's a much uh, cheaper alternative than going with the parts and purchasing them individually because they are pretty expensive. And the torque on these bolts is 106 inch pounds. If you remember um, at the beginning, when I pulled this engine down, the heads that the LS1 came with 
one of these uh, bolts was stripped out. And so we want to make sure we don't do that. Well, and there's no question about it, it's stripped out again. So, I don't know what the deal is. Okay, so this is all that this bolt sticks out past the blank off plates. And it's basically the same thing on the steam port also. And so, I'm going to go try to find a little bit longer bolt. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a tap. Kind of just clean those threads out a little bit. Alright, I ended up getting these M6 dash 1.0 by 30 millimeter bolts and I think that's going to be pretty much the perfect size for these steam ports um, the other ones it's just uh, the fact that if you look at them the end of it is not threaded and then where the threads start it's pretty tapered so I think that's what's stripping these holes out so I, I got a tap I'm going to go ahead and tap um, down into that hole that uh, I felt like it stripped a little bit it should be okay because um, this bolt's a little bit longer, so um, I'll show you the difference actually. Um, it's quite a bit longer, especially when you consider that the last quarter inch or so of this is not really threaded. Um, really, honestly, the last quarter inch of even with the thread start is tapered, so it's quite a bit longer, so these should be perfect. Well, that certainly didn't start out the way I planned, um, but... I think we're good now. Went and got the bolts, got a tap. I'm not going to just jump right up to 106 on the torque though. I'm going to kind of fill it out a little bit. I don't think it was the torque was the issue. I think um, it was just a matter of those bolts were a little bit on the short side. But I'm going to step it up a little bit and we'll see. From what I understand, this is a this was a service bolt in a GM to kind of to seal these grommets on. It makes it a lot more difficult to get off, but to keep you from having issues, shock sensors. Anyways, um, I've got the gaskets on, I've got the knock sensors on, 
I've got the steam, uh, steam port block off plates in the back and the crossover tube in the front. And so I think we are there to go ahead and uh, get this thing bolted on. So I got this bolt kit from ICT Billet. It is, it is a part number 56729-84400. And actually I think that's their in, internal part number. It's a 551400. It comes with the bolts and the washers. They say that if you if you have if you're replacing a truck manifold with the Trailblazer SS, you can use the old bolts. You just have to take the grommets off of it. So, but because I did not have a truck manifold, but a car rather a car manifold, I had to purchase this. And I do wish these uh, washers were a little bit bigger. So that they covered the shoulder of this uh, plastic manifold a little bit better, but kind of is what it is. All right, I had to go help some friends out real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing bolted down now. So I haven't had the uh, water pump in on the engine since I put the engine in the car. I guess I thought I had, but obviously I haven't because it's definitely not going to work. I've got interference here with my uh, right hand upper control arm. That's pretty typical. I think you have to basically run a straight uh, thermostat housing here. You come straight out, and then um, you basically end up plugging these. So at this point, um, water pump's coming back off, so let me get that thing pulled back off, and then uh, we'll look at a couple other things. Okay guys, it's uh, a couple of days later, and I'm going to go ahead and try to modify my water pump to uh, get it to fit, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing turned around, and we'll see what we can do on this uh, water pump.
I have the upper hole threaded. Uh, the plug is not going to be completely flush, but it's going to be pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some uh, some thread sealer on it and go ahead and get that one installed. Uh, somewhat liberal on the thread sealer. So this is not intended to ever come out, so there's really no going back here. So that's what she looks like. It's a little proud, but not bad. And then on the inside, I don't know if I can get a good video of it. There it goes. It's not quite uh, flush with the inside wall, but uh, it's pretty close. So anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, second one done. All right, so the other one went in way easier. I mean, I didn't even really intend to go down that far. It's uh, actually recessed a little bit, but should be okay. Um, it's not protruding through the other side. Um, that's what's important. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go see if I can pick up some gaskets for this water pump and I'll get this thing installed. looks like it's going to fit fine now you can see there's plenty of clearance between my upper control arm here and the water pump so uh, yeah it's uh, it's gonna work pretty good and once again I'm gonna to have to get a straight uh, thermostat housing but besides that everything looks like it's gonna fit just fine okay guys I'm trying to get better lighting in here but it's just not seeming to work so um, I'm gonna go ahead and torque the uh, water pump bolts I'm going to start off with 132 inch pounds. And then 22 foot pounds is the final pass. Good. 
Okay, I'm just gonna do a double check on all of them. All right, water pump is on for good. It is torqued, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a little cleanup here afterwards. I'm gonna go in and eat real quick, and then we'll wrap this thing up for the night. All right, guys, the belt is on. Goes around the power steering, down around the alternator. Up around the idler there and down around the crank so it is good to go <clears throat> it's a small uh, small victory here so got the water pump installed got to order a couple of parts but we're ready to go okay guys that's pretty much going to do it for this video I got the intake manifold and the water pump installed and um, really, I'm pretty much as far as I can go with the engine right now. I need to uh, purchase a new throttle body and the headers that I'm going to be using. Um, everything that um, I can use basically just to get the engine running that won't affect the tune, I'm going ahead and just reusing stuff that I have. But as far as the throttle body and the headers go, um, I want to go ahead and purchase those and have them ready. That way, I don't have to pay to have the car tuned and then upgrade later on and have to get it have to pay basically to get it tuned again so I'm gonna I'm actively looking for those two items right now um, as soon as I get them in I'll get those installed but really right now my main focus point for the next coming video is going to be working on the wiring harness um, and basically the big issue that I've been holding off on is just looking for a place to do it I would prefer to do it inside the house inside the air conditioner where it's cool but really, honestly, the only place I have to do it is the, my wife's dining room table. And um, that basically always runs the risk of me burning the table when I'm doing, uh, when I'm soldering or whatever. And, and really, honestly, that doesn't make for a very happy marriage. So um, I, I basically decided I'm going to do it here in the back of the truck. I'm just going to lay it out on a big piece of cardboard. And that way I can do, some, do the work on it. And then when I'm done for the night... I can just pull the cardboard out and lay it to the side and then uh, and then come back and throw it back in here and start over again. So anyways, with that being said, I want to wish you guys a, a happy 4th of July. Today is the 3rd, so tomorrow is Independence Day. So I hope you have a great time with your family and friends. Uh, be safe and we hope to see you again next time. Thanks and have a great night.